In this video, we're going to learn how to find the length of a string in C using recursion. So strings in C are stored inside character arrays. So if I said here car string one, open bracket, close bracket is equal to A, B, C, D, E. What we've got here is an array of characters and the array contains the characters A, B, C, D, and E, followed by a special null terminator character that signifies the end of the string. We use backslash zero to represent the null terminator, but like newline, it's really only a single character. So we're gonna write a function to find the string length of this string and any other string using recursion. And the function will look like this. We'll say int string underscore length car star string. So the function is going to return an integer the number of characters in the string, not including the special null terminator character. And the function is gonna accept a pointer to a character as an argument. And that's because when we pass an array to a function in C, the array decays to a pointer. What actually gets passed to the function is a pointer to the first element in the array. So we'll copy this and paste it, and we'll provide a definition of our function down here. Now the function itself is actually gonna be kind of short, but how it works might be a bit tricky. So let's focus on that first. So in memory, we have this string one stored. So string one is a character array. It has indexes zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And at those indexes, we have the characters A, B, C, D, and E stored as well as the special null terminator character that signifies the end of the string. Now, when we pass string one to string length, what's going to happen is the function is actually going to be given a pointer to the first character in the string. So string is really gonna be a pointer to this character here. So a pointer really just stores a memory address and so what string here stores is the memory address of this character A in our string. Now we can actually manipulate pointers using pointer arithmetic. So if I said string plus one here, this would give us a new pointer, a new memory address for the next character in the string here, B. So we can actually use pointer arithmetic to advance through the string one character at a time. Now one more operation we've got with pointers is the dereference operation. And the dereference operation will give us whatever the pointer is currently pointing to. So for example, if I said star string, here what I'm doing is using the dereference operator. And what it's gonna do is return the character that string is currently pointing to. So in this case here, it would return B. So we can use these tools to now write a recursive solution to this problem. So solving the problem recursively is going to involve the function calling itself. Each time the function is called, it's gonna solve part of the problem, then it's gonna call itself with a smaller version of the problem. That's generally how recursion works. We call that part the recursive step or the recursive case. Now eventually recursion has to stop. We call that the base case or the base step. So here's how we'll solve the problem. We're gonna say if star string is equal to the null terminator, then we're gonna stop recursion. What we're gonna do is return zero. Otherwise, we're gonna return one plus string length called with string plus one. So this here is our recursive case and this here is our base case. And in a recursive case, we're solving part of the problem and we're calling the function again with a smaller version of the problem. So we solve part of the problem by recognizing that an additional character has been found. We have this one plus here. And we're gonna to add to one, however many characters there are in the remaining portion of the string. We're gonna stop recursion once we encounter the null terminator. And at that point, we're going to return zero. That's gonna finish off a chain of additions that we're creating via these return values here. Let's actually see how this is gonna play out. 
So let's set string to point to the first character in the string. And let's just see what happens when the function is called. So when the function is first called, string is not going to be pointing to the null terminator. This else case is going to run. We're going to return one plus string length called with string plus one. So one plus string length called with string plus one. String plus one is going to advance the pointer to the next character. So the next time the function is called, it's called with this smaller version of the same problem where we're looking at the remaining portion of the string. Again, that character that string is pointing to is not the null terminator. So this here is effectively going to be replaced with one plus, and then we call string length again with string plus one. Again, this is going to advance the pointer to the next character. So string is now going to point to C. Again, C is not yet the null terminator. So this will be replaced with one plus string length called with string plus one. The pointer gets advanced again, this time to D. This gets replaced with one plus string length, string plus one. The pointer gets advanced again. Now this is going to be replaced with one plus string length, string plus one. Now finally, this time when the function is called and the string pointer is advanced to the next character, now that next character is the null terminator. So at this point, this is going to be replaced with zero. And we're left with one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus zero is equal to five. And we've determined the length of the string. Let's call the function just to make sure that's how it works. So we'll say int string one length is equal to string length and we'll call it with string one. Then we'll print out string one length. So we'll say length percent D backslash N string one underscore length. We'll save this and run it. And we get a length of five. So that's how we can recursively find the length of a string using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.